Okay, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Warrior DNA. We've got special lighting today. Expensive. The expensive lighting. Uh, because today we have a special Warrior DNA where we are actually live down here in Galveston, Texas. We have had, today, first off, Warrior DNA is relevant news that we are taking that you can apply to your everyday business life. Redefining the words faith, family, finance, fitness, and freedom. And we've actually just pulled over here. We're going to the beach right now because this morning we had such an amazing service. I'm going to tell you all about it, but I just want to tell you guys, first off, you're going to want to share this video. Uh, if you have been hoping and praying and believing for miracles. You're like, I go to church, people talk about miracles, but where are they? Uh, maybe you've been going to church your whole life and you hear preachers do great motivational messages and they talk about the Holy Spirit, but there's really no evidence of that happening. Well, you're gonna wanna share this. I encourage you, share it with everybody because what I'm gonna tell you happened this morning is amazing. And uh, we're, again, we're just here at Galveston Beach. We're getting ready to go out on the beach, but uh, we were in Alvin, Texas today. And I've got my family in the car here, Peyton and Lexi. We're gonna let you talk to them in just a second. And Larry's obviously holding the camera here, very, very close to my face, by the way. So that's awesome. That's okay, because uh, we're real, raw, and relevant here at the Wallace household. Well, today, I wanna tell you something that, uh, first, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the message and what happened today at Light Christian Center in Alvin, Texas. I believe it is the beginning of an absolute revolution down here in their church, in their lives. Now, for those of you who don't know Light Christian Center, it's a powerful church down here that's been out here for decades and decades. The pastor recently was diagnosed, given a, a life sentence, a life uh, prognosis, uh, and a so, number of other things. They got hit by the Hurricane Harvey really, really hard, all those floods that came in. Uh, they've had a number of things take place, and it's just interesting that here I'm coming in, out of the season of a decade of corporate America business, really grinding it out in the courtroom, making things happen, building big corporations. And this is the first church that God has called me to actually step out again after a decade of being off the road of preaching and teaching and singing. And today, what a welcome party we got today. Uh, so this morning I had the privilege of taking the pulpit, an opportunity to speak and share for all the people that were there. And uh, the message that last night we were meeting with the pastor and his wife and uh, Pastor Paul Golden and Sandy Golden, we love you. Uh, just having a really great time about talking. You know, when you're going through a, a situation in your life, whether it's cancer, whether it's financial problems, whether it's addiction, whether it's some type of healing that you need, it's, it's easy to talk about things that have happened in the past. And often we get confined to the history of our lives instead of recognizing that God has a destiny and a purpose. So yesterday, now we haven't seen Paul and Sandy. Actually, the last time we were down here was 10 years ago, almost, almost to the week, 10 years ago. And so we were catching up and I said to them, you know, tell me what's been going on. And it's so easy. We were sitting at a Starbucks yesterday and it's so easy to get caught up in talking about history and diagnoses and things that have happened over the years and you talk behind you as if your life is behind you. And as we were sitting there talking, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, stop talking about their history, remind them of their destiny. So here's somebody who's going through chemotherapy, uh, an amazing, amazing man of God. But again, as we're sitting there talking, it's really simple to talk about our history. We were talking about our history, Larry and I, and instantly the Holy Spirit said, do you want to live there or do you want to live there? So in just a few minutes, I said, you know, I got to stop our conversation. I feel responsible, but I really feel like God's telling us, stop talking about yesterday. Stop talking. I mean, literally one second ago is history. One second ago is history. One second ago is, it's all history unless you really consider destiny. Now, some of you have been praying and praying and praying someday, someday, someday. Some of you have been saying, I should, you know, go to the gym. I should call my family. I should say I love you more. And all you're doing is shouldn't all over yourself. And God wants us to make a shift from should into now. And so we sat there in that table and immediately I started asking, you know, because I'd asked him, you know, tell me about 
Harvey and, and that whole story and he was telling me how the water came up and ended up filling their house 12 18 inches inside of their house and um, immediately I said the Holy Spirit said don't talk about their old house ask him about their new house and I said so let me ask you tell me about your new house well they don't have a new house and he said I said what does it look like he said I don't know and I said we need to be talking about your next house because this house that they're they were in got damaged and now they're getting it all cleaned up they're gonna sell it but they need a new season and so instead of talking about the old season we start talking about the new season well all of a sudden there was this shift and he started talking about you know I believe God is I believe God will I believe God's gonna right and so we shifted out of the history but still the destiny was kind of far in advance I said let's take one more step forward instead of talking about what was or what will be let's bring it into our now now ten years ago there was actually a study done scientifically that talked about the power of our thoughts the power of the things we think the power of things we say we all know thoughts become things well here's what's interesting is ten years ago they did this study where they took water and they obviously did all these the molecular testing of water and they they found that when they spoke positive words of affirmation and healing and virtue and things that were hope filled the molecular structure of that water formed crystals that were actually forming into beautiful like uh, snowflakes right so like beautiful snowflakes but then when they did the exact same test exact same kind of water exact same time they spoke hateful words and and rebuke and 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 hate and negativeness all over that water it took a molecular structure that was very dark and ugly now now what's the point to that is our thoughts and our words matter if you're constantly talking about what he did to you or what they did to you or what she did to you or how you lost the money or how the storm crushed your life then you are speaking darkness and it's changing the molecular structure around you well what are you made of you're made of mostly water so when that negative negativity those negative thoughts are what's going through your body guess what's happening is it's forming darkness and sickness and disease so here's the thing about miracles we don't have to wait for something to happen Jesus already paid the price over 2,000 years ago for you to be healed he ripped the veil we don't have to wait on heaven heaven came to earth and heaven ripped the veil so that we could have access now now is the suddenly old things are passed away behold everything is now new you know if you begin to think on the things that are good and lovely and have a good report God says there's going to be transitions that take in place in your life now so instead of saying you know one of these days we're just believing God's gonna we're hoping for instead of that I want you to start thinking of it like this you know I don't believe that you're pursuing your dreams I believe your dreams are actually pulling you into the dream so imagine getting closer and closer to that vision that you have for your family that vision you have for your body that vision you have for your finances begin to act as if it's happening now begin to speak don't say someday say now is and so this morning as this was taking place I just got to tell you the roof was ripped off of this this church these people there was shouting there was excitement victory was taking place and this morning we started talking about if we're gonna live that now life then one of the things about church and I don't know if you've seen this but I've gone to a lot of churches you go in and people talk about miracles they talk about Jesus but they're not living it they're not they're not pursuing Jesus they like maybe they came in and raised their hand but that is not salvation can I just bust everybody's bubbles you go into a, a motivational setting on Sundays raising your hand one time and then going back to your life that is not salvation he said repent and be baptized so there's a process that has to take place instead of just a one-and-done kind of deal and we got a lot of one-and-done people that they might have raised their hand and maybe it's enough to get into heaven but let me just tell you, you raise your hand you go back sleeping with that boyfriend or that girlfriend that is not a salvation experience it is a journey the woman and we've talked about this for the last couple weeks that was busted I mean caught naked caught in the act of adultery comes before Jesus 
He didn't say, you know, neither do I condemn you. Now go on your way. Good girl. Rock, glad you raised your hand. God, you're looking at me. No, he said, go and sin no more. We never again see any record of her wanting to go back to that sin. So you can be free today. Here's what happened in that church service today. There was such an outbreak of the Holy Spirit that there were notable miracles, miracles that were documented this morning. Uh, a gentleman who was in the military, got unfortunately uh, hit by an IUD, uh, came in, had knee problems, back problems, head problems, and we were praying for another guy who was the worship leader this morning, and when we prayed for him, the guy in the very back of the room instantly got healed. Things he's not been able to do for years since he came back, he was immediately able to do. We had people that were healed in their body, healed in their mind, set free this morning from some things that they had never told anybody else. One year, all of a sudden, Holy Spirit had me talking about abortion and how God can use your story of your abortion. But you got to stop hiding it. You got to stop put, keeping it in the past. Let it be a part of your destiny. Use your story. If you've gone through an abortion, God's for forgiven you just say Jesus forgive me he forgives you instantly now give it to him let him redeem it so he can use that if it stays in your history God never gets a shot at using it in your destiny when you start sharing it and other girls start hearing your story what happens is things like this morning when I'm sharing this story and I'm saying somebody's in here you've had an abortion it's hurt you you might have the abortion you might be saved but you still you can't sleep at night because it, it messes with your mind you have so much regret so much shame and as I'm saying that people I said if, if you've got sin in your life right now like notable sin, I want you to come forward I want you to receive not only that salvation opportunity but repentance where you turn away you do a 180 from your life the the, the, uh, the stage was flooded with people and here's what's cool every single person that had not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit this morning every single one of them received this morning God poured out his spirit in such a beautiful way one gal came up uh, to one of the pastors afterwards her and her boyfriend they were just crying and they were at the front she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and and she said um, they, they asked a couple questions you know it was, it was their first time at church come to find out what got them to the altar was me talking about abortion she found out just about a week or two ago that she was pregnant and they were scheduled tomorrow morning to go in to have an abortion. But today, not only did God save their life, not only were they filled with the Holy Spirit, but people, there was a little baby saved. There was a life saved. There, you talk about miracle. I mean, that's not a healing. That's a miracle. That's a saving of a life. I say this because even as we're out here and we're kind of tired, we're going to go out on the beach and have a little bit of fun. But I wanted to share that with you because I don't know what you need this week. But I'm telling you right now, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to wait till a doctor's report comes back. You don't have to wait till someday. You don't have to should I, should I, should I. You can now experience the goodness of God. My kids are in here. I just... I know you guys are kind of chilling in the back seat, but Peyton, what did you um, what did you get most out of this morning? What got what I got most out of this morning was it was a really awesome opportunity because I was able to play. Oh my goodness! Know. Let me just say oh, this. Let me yes. brag on you for a second. So, this is the first time that we've been able to just flow ever in the history of my life. Forty-eight years where we were able, Peyton was on keyboards with the band, and he led flow, I mean flow in the Holy Ghost. I mean, it was just such a beautiful spiritual atmosphere so that these miracles could take place, so that these people could be filled with the Holy Spirit. Peyton, you did an awesome, awesome job. I would say that that was my biggest takeaway of just seeing everybody up at the front and worshiping and getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. That was the most important yeah, thing awesome. for me. Sissy, how about you? Um, I was able to take pictures today, um, so I was able to kind of see things from the back, but I was able to, um, at the very end of the service, I thought it was really cool to see and witness all the miracles. Awesome. Well, it was great. How about you, Big Daddy? <laughs> um, what I thought was amazing about today was just being able to watch you uh, be in your element and uh, to see how God was using you to, um, you know, just bring a word. <laughs> What, what you didn't say was that um, right before you went up, 
uh, all the notes that you had for the the um, uh, what you're going to be talking about today. This just you deleted them. They disappeared. And so literally, you spent the entire time speaking straight from your heart. And just to see how it impacted all those people that were there was uh, just amazing. And to see the story after story after story after um, we finished today, the people's you know lives changed, the, the hope that was given, um, just the inspiration, it was awesome. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because he said that my notes went away. Well, here's what's crazy is, so this is the first time in years I don't know how many years, I'm not going to say a decade, but it's been a long time uh, since I've been just given the free flow to be able to flow like that. So this morning, you know, I had notes, I had scriptures. Right as I go up, I had them all on my phone. Right as I go up, I accidentally push delete. And every one of my notes were gone. I couldn't recover them. And I just knew that was God saying, I just want to see what's in you after 10 years. All these ti- this time in the corporate America pouring into companies. Let's see what you got. And I'm just telling you guys this morning, it was, we had a number of ladies that drove down here from Frisco, Texas, uh, in Dallas, Texas, drove all the way down to Alvin Galveston area. And uh, it was such a su- surprise to see them show up, but they were there praying for people, laying hands on people, uh, helping people get baptized in the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about it for weeks. Every Tuesday night, we get together, you know, M women emwomen.com. That's what this is about. We believe that now is the time. This is the place and you are the one. Just like me, God's going to call you to do some stuff that maybe you didn't think you'd be doing, but he's going to call you because he has people in the marketplace like that little girl that just stopped from having an abortion. They're out there right now. And if you will get out of your comfort zone and you will begin to let God use you right where you are in the street, not in a church. I mean, that's once a week. We need to be doing this in the Starbucks. We need to be doing this in the Walmarts, on the beaches, wherever you're at. Let the love of Jesus, the healing virtue of Jesus. We did a how-to prayer clinic this morning. How to how to just pray for somebody in Starbucks. What does that look like, right? And so I just encourage you today let the Holy Spirit pull out of you the greatness in you for now. Not, not someday I'll let God. No, he wants to use you now. You don't have to be perfect. You have to be available. You just have to say, God, I'm willing. Yes, use me. That's what Mary said. She didn't know how she was going to have the Savior of the world. Yes, use me. When she said yes, God brought heaven to earth now. And that's what he's going to do for you. So I encourage you, just share this with somebody. I believe there's people out there right now. Maybe you're suffering. Maybe you got disease in your body. Maybe you're contemplating making some really bad choices, whether it's abortion or, or, you know, leaving your family. I'm just telling you right now, now is a time for your miracle. Now is a time for you to know you can partner with God no matter what that story. I had one guy that uh, he's unfortunately been incarcerated and made some mistakes with some guns. Let's just say that. And this morning he came, God just set him free. And I believe he who the sun sets free is free indeed. God doesn't work with perfect vessels. He works with yielded vessels. And if you'll become a yielded vessel, no matter what your story has been, God can use your story to become his story to change the world. And right now, if you'll just pray this prayer, Father God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that whoever's listening, that they will begin to hunger and thirst for more of you. God, we know that even if I said right now, raise your hands, it's not about raising our hands. It's about believing and pursuing, believing and pursuing God, wanting more of him, wanting to leave whoever we were so that we can bring heaven to earth in our life now. I pray for these people. God, I pray that you'll fill them with your spirit. I pray that they will know that they know that they know you are God. And even right now, healing virtue, deliverance, miracles flow for what they need right now in the name of Jesus. This has been a Warrior DNA. I hope you share it with your friends. Make sure you go over to emwomen.com and and check out the prayer app. If you need prayer, whether you're a male or female, we've got intercessors on tap 24 hours a day to pray for you absolutely free just go to emwomen.com forward slash pray and uh, you'll be able to download that app when you have need just get in there and say hey can somebody just pray for my marriage because these are the same women that were here this morning 
a band of women that came here, saw miracles today take place, are the same women that are going to be praying for you. And I believe that you're going to begin to see the healing virtues, signs and wonders appear in your life. Because that's who God is. If you think Christianity is boring or the Bible is irre irrelevant, then you're not tapping in to the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I believe God's best for you this week. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on Facebook. Send me a comment, a message. Tell me where you're watching from. We'll see you next week.